I felt, like I, failed, I felt like I failed my parents. Like, once. what are you watching to get that in your recommended? Exactly. I feel I like we lost no. the war. I'm not even watching. I'm not. I don't even watch effing math or related videos or related videos or whatever. Yeah, like I don't like. I don't even watch the game theory for example. So yeah. I don't see. I don't even see. How. And this is a thumbnail on it too. I posted not the board. This is the. Is it, let me oh! I got the entire kill feed full of dynamite. 930 dynamite. points from dynamite. <laughs> Dynamite's the best thing ever. Wait, you, you, how many kills with dynamite? I don't know. There were so that. many. Shadow Warrior 2 is one of my favorite games that has released recently in a year that has been full of good releases. On Steam, it's got a 90% positive rating, which is a very respectable rating for any game, let alone one that's an indie game. The Steam reviews are one thing, but the PC Gamer review is going to be the subject of this video. As you can see, it is a 78 out of 100, and let's talk about review scores for just a second, and let's clear this out right now. I know a lot of people are already thinking thoughts in their head, and I want to squash those while we can, all right? 10 out of 10s, and some stars out of some stars. I, I don't like those systems. They're not great. They're not ideal. A lot of the times, though, they can get a general idea across. The meta score that you see at the bottom of this image, that's actually for Shadow Warrior 2. User scores 8.6 out of 10 based on 280 ratings, and that's, again, very respectable. I think it's a great game. I think you should buy it. It's 40 bucks. Go for it. But why this review in particular? Why is this perhaps the worst review I've ever seen of a video game, and why do I think it's indicative of what could perhaps in the future be a larger issue for reviewers and for this industry? Shadow Warrior 2 review by James Davenport. Yes, this is almost a month old. I get it, but I got things to do. I got a life. We're getting around to it when we get around to it. And now we're getting around to it. So there you go. Bam. 78 out of 100. Well, let's look at it this way. What is it? A wild looter shooter with procedural environments and dated humor. Hmm. Expect to pay $40. Developer, blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's start reading this puppy off and see if we can't see why I'm a little, hmm, about this whole schmagaggle. There's this thing that some people have called a penis, and Shadow Warrior 2 wants to make sure you know it. There are so many dick jokes that the supporting characters ask, what's up with the dick jokes? But without pause, Shadow Warrior 2 takes every opportunity to elevate aimless, crass humor above its acrobatic first-person shooting, wildly diverse weapons, hilarious precision gore system, RPG light loot hooks, procedurally generated levels, and open-ended four-player co-opable campaign. It's a shame, really, because systematically, Shadow Warrior 2 is one of the most joyful and expressive FPS games of the year. But thematically, I wish I could kick it in the teeth. Do you know why he wants to kick it in the teeth? Do you know why Mr. Davenport wants to kick this game in the teeth? Because Mr. Davenport is a little butthurt bitch. Ad hominem alert, James Davenport looks exactly how you would probably imagine somebody who's about to make the complaints about this game would look like. And of course he's from San Fran, California. Good luck with that secession, by the way. I know, I know, I'm being rough. Doesn't help anything, but I just couldn't help notice this is, you know, sort of stereotypical in a way. So let's rip this apart. This article instantly starts off with saying that the humor of Shadow Warrior, which has historically been, purposefully, basically one big inappropriate dad joke. Shadow Warrior 2 is full of dick jokes and scatological humor. It's full of stereotype humor, race jokes, ethnic jokes, jokes on everybody. It's all just one big amalgamation of awful humor that's so bad you can't help but grin. Unless, of course, you're a sensitive kind of snowflake who decides that if you make jokes about certain peoples, well, that should take away from the review score that you give it. The protagonist's name is Lo Wang. Lo Wang. The protagonist's name is a joke about dicks. And it's not a secret either. The entire ad campaign talks about how this is, it's got a bunch of silly humor in it, right? The game has made me laugh aloud multiple times. Mostly it's just me rolling my eyes and cooking a grin because the humor is so silly and dumb. Like I said, it's one big and appropriate dad level joke. What he's trying to illustrate here with the beginning of this review is that the inappropriate humor 
the silly, dumb jokes. They are everywhere in this game, all the time. You can't get away from them. You pick up fortune cookies, they have dick jokes on them. Lo Wang is constantly uh, with ambient dialogue and in the way that he interacts with characters, talking about penises and boobies and poo-poo and all sorts of inappropriate things. That's just the nature of the game. It's a silly game. It's over the top. It's that way, it's that way by design. If every single actual gameplay element was kept in the game, but all of the uh, humor was stripped away, it wouldn't be Shadow Warrior. It would be something else. But it's the humor of the game that separates it from the rest of the crowd. There are so many video games now. I mean, it's such a huge industry. Finding ways to separate yourself from the pack can be difficult in a lot of ways, but one of the ways Shadow Warrior continues to do it, not just because it has really excellent first-person combat, and of course all the other things, is with the theme of this silly, over-the-top, inappropriate, always-in-your-face sarcastic humor. I mean, the fortune cookies alone, having sex is like playing bridge. If you don't have a good partner, you'd better have a great hand. All men eat, but Fu Man chew. Man who drops soap in prison shower is super bummed and wangs out for Harambe because, of course, Shadow Warriors 2, all about them memes. Some say baseball has it wrong. Man with four balls cannot walk. I mean, the humor, I mean, come on. I mean, four balls, man. I mean, come on. Ugh. In any event. The article says, without pause, Shadow Warrior 2 takes every opportunity to elevate aimless, crass humor above its acrobatic first-person shooting, while leaderverse weapons, blah, 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 all the other excellent things about the game. Here's the thing, though. I don't think anyone who plays this game is thinking to themselves, gosh, there are so many instances where the humor, the attempts at humor, or the jokes of the game are getting in the way of me actually playing the game. Fortune cookies, for instance, totally optional. They're passive. When you, when you pick them up, they display at the bottom of the screen. You walk into a house and open a box, and all of a sudden, bam, never hit a man with glasses, hit him with a baseball bat. I mean, come on. It's great. The character of Lo Wang, he, he's just an inappropriate piece of shit, but he's lovable because you, he makes you laugh, you relate to the guy, he, he likes, you know, tits and ass, and he makes dick jokes. I mean, he's just a stereotypical dude bro who just has to fight demons. It gives the game flavor. Dick flavor. Which is an excellent flavor, I might add. I'm not saying not to shower, but give it a second. Let your musk build up a little bit. It's in a spectrum. You'll find your magic place. I mean, excuse me for liking dicks that aren't my own. I don't even understand the way that James portrays his aimless humor. What is aimless humor? The aim of humor is to make you laugh or to make you roll your eyes because it's so bad part of you thinks it's good. I mean, it is humor. It's there to make you laugh, and obviously not every joke is a hit. I mean, gosh, I could tell you every time I hit the bullseye, and I don't have to tell you all the times I missed. But if this game is throwing 10 jokes at you a second and five of them stick, oh, hell yeah, you're going to be laughing your ass off. Even if most of the time you're just smiling and rolling your eyes as you're cutting through demons. I think he says this because James is an overly sensitive individual. And to him, this bothers him. He is genuinely bothered that this, uh, that this humor is politically incorrect. They make fun of everything in this game, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. In a rare moment of silence from Wang, the chatty protagonist, which is redundant if it's a rare moment of silence, we know it's chatty, I swing a chainsaw skyward and grind a cybernetic ninja into two long vertical pieces. The halves fly upward from the chainsaw's momentum, so I swing horizontally, quartering the poor cyborg. For fun, I whip out an automatic shotgun called the boner, there you go, and shoot the pieces out of the air like meat pigeons. Pigeons are made of meat. I don't know why. My head swings back and I cackle. This physical comedy, the procedural gore that slices and explodes enemies exactly where they're hit is Shadow Warriors 2, Shadow Warrior 2's best joke. I would disagree with them there. I think that the jokes are the best joke. Shotguns leave gaping holes in enemies. Katanas can disarm gun-wielding demons, literally, and nail guns do exactly what they're designed to. It is grotesque, slapstick, shooter comedy better than it's ever been, undermined by an irritating desire to be clever and 
edgy. James, come off it. My God, you sensitive little fuckstick. The whole thing about this article so far is that James could have said, I don't really care for the humor, but I'm not going to fucking make such a huge deal about it. Originally, I was going to have this just be about the PC Gamer review, but when I looked at other review scores, even though, okay, look, users love this game. The people who actually buy this game love it, okay? 8.6 on Metacritic. 90% approval on Steam. This game is almost universally loved by every normal human being who buys this game. Then you go over to places like PC Gamer, or you go over to Polygon. The reviewer of this, Carly something, she says, these jokes are bad and happen too frequently. There are only so many, oh, you said duty, I thought you said duty jokes, I can take before it gets tired. Thanks to the horrible dialogue and the racist stereotyping, I found it impossible to connect with him as a player. This is tough considering that, you know, he's the main character. Fuck off, Carly. Goddamn. The review wraps up. Shadow Warrior 2 feels hollow. There might be a place for a 1997-style game in 2016, something simple with a narrow focus that plays on many of the boring, sexist, and lazy traditions that gaming has left behind, but Shadow Warrior 2 isn't nearly enough? Come the fuck on, Carly. This is why people don't respect games journalism anymore, Carly. You're the reason why, Carly! Because you have to- everyone has to be so fucking sensitive about jokes and humor and who's being made fun of and oh what the joke is and everything's sexist everything's racist we can't just fucking let it go and appreciate that jokes are funny and you can make jokes about anyone and anything at any time because that's comedy and comedy is about pushing the boundaries of humor and humor makes people laugh humor brings people together that's why you look at all these official reviewers and they give this game lower marks because of the humor while all the normal people, you know, the people who understand what humor is and understand that it's, you know, humorous, are praising the game, myself included. When I was going through this game, I have about eight and a half or so hours in it right now, as of the time of this particular recording in the video, and never once did I think this game is sexist. This game objectifies women. This game objectifies men. This game is making, um, th this game is literally racist, or this game is literally putting down an ethnic group or a minority. Fuck that shit. The protagonist is a minority. I mean, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. It doesn't matter that w the, the secondary character of the game is black, or that it's a woman, or that you play as an Asian, or that your buddy's white, or that. It, none of that matters. None of that matters. It, li it literally does not matter unless you go around looking for quotas. Like, I bet you, Carly, you're the person who goes into a Five Guys and expects for there to actually be Five Guys there in addition to Five Women so it's all equal. There's also the site that gave Call of Duty Infinite Warfare an 8.5 out of 10. I know it's a different reviewer, but holy fuck, man. Doesn't it go to show that the reviewer's personal butt hurt can get in the way of their ability to assess a game? Because I honestly do not believe there's no way I'm thinking Carly gave this a good, proper, fair, thorough review when she so when she shows that she's just so bothered by humor, sexism, racism. Get out of here. As an illustration of the differences between how people review these games and why Carly really fucked the pooch on this one, and normally I'm in favor of that sort of thing. Carly says, each approach is the same. You point and shoot. Combat doesn't evolve in any meaningful way. It gets stale and boring and repetitive too quickly. And then when you go back to the PC gaming article, James Davenport says, the combat is an empty canvas where I'm still finding new methods for painting a demon and robot massacre. S-O-C-K-S. In any way, vulgarity and edgy humor aren't inherently bad. But Shadow Warrior 2 uses it without purpose. No, they do have a purpose, James. The purpose is to make you laugh. And the purpose is that if you're not an oversensitive snowflake, you laugh at them or you roll your eyes and grin, or the joke misses and you continue playing an extremely fun game and enjoying it for the gameplay. Early on, he says, I found a gun called the Genocider, which is where the joke begins and ends. It's an indistinct weapon, utilitarian and mechanical, and that's it. 
The joke is the word genocide, the intentional mass murder of an entire race or religion or nation. It's not a lovely historical slideshow to conjure. Come the fuck on, James. You're you're deducting the score of a game because one of the weapons is called the genocider. I mean, I mean, you're you're killing like demons from like the spirit realm or whatever. So it, it kind of is like genocide in a way, but. I mean, James is fucking triggered because a gun is called the Genocider, and he thinks that's like some sort of big joke. No, it's just, it's a gun called the Genocider. And how dare you call it indistinct? It is a automatic grenade launcher. Sorry, an automatic grenade launcher. And the amount of things you can do to the weapons in this game can turn them into all sorts of crazy other weapons. It, whatever, that, that's part of the review. Look, just go by Shadow Warrior 2. It's a great game. He goes on, later on, a character mistakes Wang's monologue about a small woman inside of him, a spirit that is taking up residency in his head and acts as a guide, like Wang has a spirit inside of his noggin, uh, another character in the game, as him coming out as transgender. The subject and butt of the joke, the difficult transition process, isn't placed in an amusing light. It's just pointed at as if to say, hey, transgender people, right? It nests the act of coming out in the tension of the joke, coloring it as something to be uneasy about. What year is it? And then it's back to dick jokes. Ugh. There is actually one thing I think you can do for me. Name it. This is gonna sound weird. I very much doubt you can surprise me. Okay, um, I have a young girl trapped inside my head. Oh, I'm so glad you said something. Are you actively transitioning? Have you told the important people in your life? No, uh, no, it, it's not. No, no, I understand. These things can be hard to talk about. No, it's more of a, a, a magical situation. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I'm so happy you're at peace with it, darling. That's it. That's the joke. That's all, that's all it is. That, that's all of it. You're not, that, there's no other context. There's no other anything. That is the entirety of the transgender joke in Shadow Warrior 2. That, that, that's it. That, that's all there is. There's no more. It's over. That's what James Davenport is getting so butthurt about. That's it right there. Most normal people watches, even the guy that I, uh, that I used the clip from, uh, YouTuber Mess of an Ego. His uh, description was, was not expecting a mention of transgendered experience. And what it seems to be a tasteful dialogue about it. And honestly, that's how I felt. Of course, I was laughing the first time I heard it because it was funny. It came out of left field. I had no, it was just funny. But I can't think of any point during the time of this joke, of this back and forth, where anyone is disparaged or make, made fun of. This is one of the jokes in the game where there is no but. This joke does not come at the expense of anybody. This joke doesn't even make fun of anything. A character mistakes somebody's uh, verbiage for them coming out as transgender. And she supports it fully. I don't see how this in any way could be a bad joke to make against anybody. Maybe I don't understand because I'm a fucking white male. Who knows? But when you have a review of a game and you take things like this, which really are absolutely harmless and are genuinely humorous to me, and you deduct the quality of the game because it makes a joke like this. And it makes you doesn't... Because it hurts you in the fee-fees. I, I really have a hard time respecting you as a video game reviewer. James Davenport has tainted his respect and his reputation as a video game reviewer in my eyes and a lot of people's eyes. Because you can guess how the comments of all of these reviews are. Well, I loved it, and the humor didn't bother me. And you're being a sensitive snowflake. Doom, a similar shooter, gets away with its exaggerated premise by keeping it simple. Hell spits out some demons, caricatures of evil that don't do a lot of talking. They're red and bad, and you have to shoot them. There's no time for talk. There are a lot of comparisons between Shadow Warrior 2 and Doom because they basically share the same premise in that sense. There's a lot of baddies from hell and you have to destroy them in brutal gory ways with a wide variety of weapons. The difference is that one is more serious in its tone, Doom, and the other is much more lighthearted and funny and full of silly, dirty, dad joke humor. 
The Rock Paper Shotgun review says, It's Doom without the claustrophobia. Instead of Doom's constant forward momentum, here you're jumping, dodging, and dashing in every direction. The IGN review of this game, who did give it an 8.6 actually, matching perfectly with the Metacritic score for users, on Koinky Dink. They say Shadow Warrior 2 plays like Doom with a potty mouth and Japanese decor. And across all the reviews you find of this game, Carly's really seems to be the only one that I could find of the five or so that I looked at that actually counts the the gameplay itself as a negative against the game. And she seems to be the one who's bringing up how sexist and fucking racist it is. What, is, what a coincidence that is, is it not? Huh. Everyone else is praising the weapon variety and how inventive your kills can be and how much there is to enjoy about combat, except for the person who happens to bring up how racist and sexist the game is. Hey Carly, fuck right off with your bullshit. Doom is a serious game. Shadow Warrior 2 is a lighthearted game. That's the way it is. These are the themes, these are the feelings, these are the, the, I don't know, the tones of these two different games, and they're both fantastic. They take a premise, and they go in different directions with it, while still keeping the core foundation solid. Lots of bad guys, lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of weapons. Go get them, cowboy. Oh, sorry, th was that a white person joke, calling him cowboy? I'm so, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. No matter how repetitive the environments and loot tinkering get, Shadow Warrior 2 stays a rewarding slapstick comedy thanks to its thrilling open-ended combat. It's like the FPS embodiment of a dive bar, a place to kick back and tear up some demonic bad guy fodder with some friends. The drink selection is great, but the jukebox is too damn loud, and only plays hair metal when hit wonders. If you can tolerate the baseless, dated humor, then Shadow Warrior 2 is an easy recommendation, but it's a shame the excellent combat and deep customization systems need a, need a caveat at all. Oh my god, James Davenport, fuck right off. Baseless, dated humor. Baseless? Baseless, you mean like, without having a foundation in fact? That's ridiculous. A joke, look, it, if, a, if a joke makes you laugh, it's not dated, it's not out of touch, it's not old, it's not archaic, all right? If a joke makes you laugh, then it is just as effective as it was on the day it was thunk up. And I have said during this review that he takes away from the game because of the humor. You might be saying, well, maybe it's something he said in the review about the actual gameplay and things that he took away from. Well, if you go to the PC Gamer site and you look through all their reviews, the thumbnail, the intro of The Shadow Warrior 2 explicitly states a thrilling looter shooter that nearly makes up for its bad jokes with a comically advanced gore system. So basically, basically the game would be better, but the jokes were bad, so I'm deducting from the score. It is now a 78. Shadow Warrior 2's combat is gleefully expressive and varied, but undermined by tired, dated humor. You see the thing here? The gameplay's excellent. It's fantastic. It's awesome. It's fun. It's inventive. But you know what? I'm just a precious little snowflake who got his fifis hurt because they named a gun Genocider. Because they told a joke that involved a potential transgender, and, oh, well, that offended me, so we're going to take off some more points for that. Let's go to the comments of this video. They're golden. They're golden. Top comment. Nearly half of the review is dedicated to bashing the edgy humor in a Shadow Warrior game. If you don't like it, then one paragraph is more than enough to express your opinion. Next comment down. Can we have the option to toggle the tolerance filter for future review scores? I'm curious how many points the game lost because James Davenport doesn't like how the word genocide sounds. Now the people obviously bring up the obvious point about, well, the only people who seem to not really like it are these uh, reviewers. It's universally loved on Steam practically. Again, 90% positive approval rate. I mean, damn. Well, choo-choo motherfuckers, let's keep this train a-rollin'. When I first played Shadow Warrior, it was 1997. I was a kid, dick and fart jokes were hilarious. It's 2016. I'm a man with a 10-year plan. Dick and fart jokes are still hilarious. I'm not sorry. This guy is what we might call a real, normal human being. This one here is actually probably my favorite. The whole thing, what year is it thing? It's 2016. Time for you to grow out of that mindless SJW. Notice the spaces between S and J and W on PC Gamer. Hmm? 
childish nonsense and accept that joke can be made about us LGBT people just like anyone else. And Evan replies, you can either make fun of everything or you can't make fun of anything. At the bottom, Circa War, doesn't matter the context, transgenders deserve to be made fun of just as much as straight white men, do men does. Equality, right? And that's ideally the purpose when people say, well, if you want equality, you're going to have to take the bad with the good. It's the nature of the beast. There's a phenomenal video by a YouTuber I really enjoy named Lindy Beige. He made a video called Let's Laugh at Minorities, and he sums up the point in an incredible way. Joke about anything, race, religion, all the big topics, they're all fine by me. And in fact, I, I would encourage them, not least because one of the most effective ways to keep people out of the debate, keep people out of mainstream society, to um, section them off, make sure that no one ever completely accepts them, is to make them taboo. Because a lot of um, you know, well-meaning people, uh, they may consider themselves to be liberal, will say, oh, no, 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 you can't tell any jokes about, oh, I don't know, let's, uh, let's pick a real religion, Sikhs, there you go. You can't tell a, a joke about Sikhs or make fun of Sikhs because, you know, that's, that's bad. Well, wait a minute, how could, we, how could we act to exclude Sikhs from, let's say, modern British society? How could we do that really effectively? I know. You're not allowed to make fun of them. You're not allowed to uh, include them in jokes or uh, any political statements. Wow, that would really exclude them. I mean, really thoroughly exclude them, wouldn't it? Uh, would it make them feel happier or better? Would it make them stronger as people? No, of course it wouldn't. Because what is the most powerful way of saying something that is shameful, ghastly or wrong, or not to be trusted, not to be associated with? You make it unmentionable. You make it unspeakable. If you can't use the word to describe a race or a religion or anything like that, suddenly that that thing becomes utterly powerfully associated with uh, a, a, a sense of wrongness. If you bring up children to say, oh you can make you can make fun of absolutely anyone but not Sikhs, are those children ever going to look upon Sikhs as just, you know, ordinary people who are not part of the same society as, as, that they're not part of? No, of course, that's going to really fence off Sikhdom, isn't it, from the rest of British society? Is that what we want? Of course it isn't. Do we understand now? I am hoping that he was transparently clear. I take dick up the ass ten ways till Tuesday. And I hate it whenever anybody expresses concern that someone made a gay person joke. Shadow Warrior 2 illustrates an excellent example of this because of how crass a lot of the jokes are. They're just rude and inappropriate, and they're dirty and nasty, and they're great, and I love it. This game doesn't pull any punches in that sense. The combat is just like the humor. It's just over the top and all over the place. With really the exception of only one that I could see, the game was praised for the gameplay, but it was people getting all triggered and butthurt over the subject of the humor in the game so much that they couldn't just say, oh, I didn't like the humor personally. No, 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 no. They had to include that in their final review of the actual game. So someone sees a 5 out of 10 on Polygon for Shadow Warrior 2 and thinks, oh my goodness. Personally, I think that the Polygon review was given a 5 out of 10 to Shadow Warrior 2 because she personally felt insulted by the jokes in there because she's a fucking triggered precious snowflake and she didn't want the game to succeed. I think that she gave it a 5 out of 10 and because she allowed the way that she thought of the jokes to impact the way she saw everything else in the game. This is not professional behavior. This is why games journalism is a joke, why I don't respect it, and why a lot of people don't respect it either. That's why when I want reviews of a game, I go to see what the people think about it. You know, the regular people, people who don't get triggered by a gun called the genocider. If I want a single reviewer to look at stuff at a game and give me a review, I'll go to people that I trust, that I normally find are right. I go to Total Biscuit. I go to Angry Joe. I go to Jim Sterling. I go to all these guys who are not part of these massive 
uh, websites, who aren't part of traditional games journalism or the traditional media. Because we're at a point now where we just can't rely on those forms of news outlets to be accurate or to not be biased. A September Gallup poll, for instance, showed that among Americans, only 32% of people say that they have a great deal or fair amount of trust in the media. The times they are a changing. I'm concerned that personal biases among the ultra-liberal, triggered snowflake SJW crowd who has positions at these sorts of places, I feel that their personal opinions on certain objects or on certain substances or on certain topics can unfairly affect the review scores of otherwise fantastic games. That's why you can have reviews that do nothing but praise a game, except they don't like the humor, and then the review turns out to be a 78. That's why the lowest review I found, 5 out of 10, was the only review where the author was so focused on imagined racism and sexism, and that just happened to be the review that gameplay was criticized as well. But I think those are enough of my thoughts. If you want more of what I'm thinking during the day in between videos, then do follow me on Twitter at YourPalRags. It's the best, easiest way to reach me, because YouTube is shite for that. Ciao, sayonara, you guys have a good one.